Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the September the 12th, 2016 uh, meeting of the Dow County Board of Commissioners. Uh, Chairman Walker is on vacation. He's taking his yearly retreat with his wife and family. We wish him well. And also, Commissioner Tony Brown, I think, is going on vacation also. We don't know if they're vacationing together, but at least they're getting a little time off. Everybody needs a little bit of time for their family. So at this time, we'll call the meeting to order, and I'll ask... Uh, Mr. Crawford, if he will, to lead us in the prayer. And Commissioner Hallfield, if he will, to lead us in the pledge. Sure. Thoughts yeah, stand, please. <clears throat> Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful day you've given us and keeping us safe in our daily adventures today in our life. As we come together tonight as a Board of Commissioners, I ask that, that each decision that we make be uh, in, with it, pleasing in your sight and that we do what's best for our county. Uh, dear Lord, we ask special prayers for a city that's not too far from us. The city of Shelby lost a police officer today. Comfort his family during this hard time and take care of them and be with that department in that city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, let's all uh, face the flag and come to attention. Place your hand over your heart and your side along with me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you may be seated. Okay, Jim, we have before you the minutes. I hope you've had time to look over those. And uh, I'll open up the floor for a motion when you're ready. Motion to approve. Have a motion. Have a second. I'll second. Have a motion, second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. You have the agenda presented. It's been prepared by staff. You've had time to look at that. We have any additions or corrections or deletions to the uh, agenda? Chair, make a motion to approve the agenda is presented. Second. Have a motion, second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Agenda is approved 100%. Okay, this is our first. Uh, Appointment tonight, 505, recognition of the Fishers of Men Sunday School class, and we see a, uh, a room full of uh, handsome men, okay, and maybe some ladies here that's with uh, Pleasant Gardens Baptist Church. And I'll turn this over to uh, Randy. You, you want to handle that, or you want to actually? Um, actually, go ahead. Okay, we'll turn it over to our county manager to talk about. Sure. Uh, um, Commissioner Hollifield had uh, requested several months back uh, for the opportunity to recognize uh, this great group of gentlemen. Um, and since we had been uh, recognizing some worthy folks, uh, he had said there's definitely maybe no one or no group that uh, needs to be overlooked, uh, especially the Fishers of Men uh, Sunday School class. I've seen firsthand the work they do, and it is fantastic and is very needed in our community. Uh, they're known for building uh, wheelchair ramps, and I've seen that firsthand, and it, uh, they do a great job and should be commended. Um, and they definitely deserve the praise tonight and the recognition. Uh, and I know Commissioner Hollifield uh, may have a few more words to uh, say and can introduce the, uh, the speaker for tonight, but uh, I think on behalf of um, uh, those that have benefited from their work, I, I think they deserve a, a thank you. Well, I've been associated and a member of the Fisher's Men for one on about four years now. And uh, one of the reasons I got associated and joined uh, the church or, or become a member of the Fisher Men class is because of the, what they do in the community. And that's, uh, you know, I've heard good work about all the ramps that are being built, and I've heard that mainly from. Uh, Willis and Frank they told me all told me quite a bit about that and got me real interested and also the wood ministry you know the, the, the group really uh, uh, cuts and delivers a lot of wood thanks to the needy uh, during the winter months and we got this uh, there's a handout right now and uh, I'm suppose somebody's going y'all going to get up and sort of walk through this a little bit you going to do this Joe <laughs> now you're on camera. Remember this, yes, man. Okay, I've got my best side looking at you right now. 
Where's the preacher at? Well, <laughs> there he is back there. We certainly appreciate the opportunity to come here this evening. We certainly appreciate the, you being aware, making other folks aware of, of what we do. Um, this is the crew for the most part. Uh, the oldest person we have working with us now is Don Horn. And um, Don came over as the first mate on Columbus's ship. So <laughs> you, you can see that all of us for the most part are gray headed and, and full of, of retirement, which we absolutely love. And one of the main reasons we enjoy it so much is the fishers of men and the opportunities we have to serve the needy in this county. We've put together a, a very short book for you that describes somewhat the, the activities that we're involved in. Ramp building is, is just one of many things that we do. Invariably, when we go to ramp, build a ramp, we see something else that needs done and we try to, to assist as we can on that. Um, we had one last year, the year before last, I believe it was, that we spent an entire week um, a needy family that when we got there, we got the ramp built. The child was a, a handicapped child at the age of 12 or 13. I also had a, an elderly uh, mother, uh, maternal figure for the family that was battling cancer and had several operations, was also um, confined. And when we finished up, we had a, a very small section at the end of the ramp that we needed to pour concrete for. And when we asked for water, um, the lady that we were actually working with on building the ramp went to her car and brought us back two or three jugs of, of water. And it was at that point in time that we realized that they had no running water in the house. They had not had water for approximately two years. And under investigation, we found out that the pump was gone. Um, at a period of time when they were not there, someone had gone in and stole all the, the copper piping out from underneath the house. So it ended up that we spent over a week working at that particular site and putting in a pump, replumbing the house. Uh, you'll see in the report there that um, you know we purchased hot water heaters and toilets and sinks and got them back on their feet and going. Every time we think that We've completed all the ramps. Folks, the door just opens again. Um, Tommy Henley is our director, our, our leader. We voted on him, incidentally, to, to be that. Um, we were looking for somebody that knew nothing about construction and who thought they knew the answer to everything. And so we selected Tommy. But he does keep us in line and, and without Tommy. And his drive, um, you know, there's lots of mornings we, we'd give up on it but he keeps on, on pushing us. Um, there is just so much need in this county, folks, for, for anybody willing to help. And um, here about a month ago, we, we thought we had all the ramps called up. And within a matter of a couple of days, Tommy got six more calls. And that's just, just the way it goes. And that's the reason we, we average approximately 45 ramps a year. That's almost a ramp a week. And um, it's, it's for all kinds of things. We, we work with, with the school system on, on handicapped chid, kids, kids with disabilities. Um, we, we look at wreck victims. We've got two, and we've reported on that. We built ramps for two teenage age boys who will never walk again. The elderly, um, one of, one of the, the most blessed ramps that we've ever built was for a 93-year-old World War II vet and his 91-year-old wife. And their house sat down off the road. And he couldn't get out to go to church on Sunday morning. So we built them a ramp. And when the ramp was completed, then he asked that we all come down to the front porch. And we went down to the front porch and we joined hands and he prayed for us. And then he walked up the ramp by himself. Um, you talk about moving. We invite you to come anytime and join us. Most weeks, it's on Wednesday morning is our first ramp, and then we go from there as to what's needed thereafter. 
But um, feel free at any time to, to join us. Again, we, we appreciate you folks and what y'all do for the county. And um, if you see someone in need, please feel free to call. Thank you. Is anyone else wishing to speak from the group? I know there's several over here. No. You want to, Matt, go ahead. Randy, you got anything else you want to add? You to didn't you? mention about those good breakfasts you do once a month. Well, yeah. On, on, <laughs> They're pretty, pretty nice, you know. On the fourth Saturday of each month, we do a breakfast, $5 donation. And that money goes for various and sundry things that, that the church sees fit, fit for it to be used for. And incidentally, I mentioned in here, we work solely on donations. We're not funded by the church in any, in any way. Uh, the only monies we ever draw from the church are, are for instance, when, when we run short and we pull off the, off the breakfast money, you know. But the breakfast money is there for, to be used anywhere within the church, and it's not a part of the funding of the budget process of the church itself. So here again, we, we certainly invite you to breakfast. You won't find a better breakfast anywhere. And uh, Matthew has been there, and of course Randy has been there. And uh, we'd love to see you there. Uh, you don't have to eat Cheryl's pancakes. <laughs> but you can if you want. Barry, you said you'd go this month, didn't you? I have been. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say a good group of gentlemen that take time out of your schedules to help people in need. And as a county, we're getting older, and uh, and people are always going to be in need. But for any community to work, government can't do it all. It takes good-hearted people who help each other out to make this world the place it is. That's right. And I appreciate everything that you do. You know, many times when I was working at EMS and our emergency service directors back there and our deputy director of uh, emergency management, um, we would go out on an ambulance many times, and he can tell you there probably was still many more out there. I'm sure that we could keep you busy five, six days a week, let you off on Sunday. Right. But um, the need is out there. You said that, and typically that's when you will see it. Uh, a lot of these people wouldn't ask for help. I know a couple of times I'd go in, and a couple of your members I would uh, – call them and mention it to them. I said, I've, I've located a family. Is there anything we can do to help? And they was always very gracious to go out and um, assess the situation and look at the need. And I appreciate what you do. Well, in the these community. are the guys right here that put it all together and make it work. Yeah. And that's what it takes. Um, before you go, we have a little, uh, little presentation, a little certificate of appreciation. Um, we'll do that for the whole group. Uh, if one of you want to come up for the whole group. We may generally, uh, you want to have a Kodak moment? Yes. Yeah, we'll have a Kodak moment too. We'll, we'll uh, take, I'll read this and we'll take this brief recess to, to uh, present this. We'll let everybody come up. It says, Kelly's McDowell. A battery is dead. Certificate of appreciation. Can't keep it up. This certificate is awarded to John Roach, Fishers of Men, Sunday School class. In recognition of your selfless dedication and generous contribution to others, by the McDowell County Board of Commissioners, September the 12th, 2016. Thank you. We'll take just a brief recess. All right, we're back in session. Uh, just after just a brief recess, uh, honoring the uh, and recognizing the Fisher's men from Pleasant Garden Baptist Church for all the work they do. Uh, pretty much on schedule. We'll look at 515, first appointments, administrative items. Uh, Mr. Wooten. Sure, I'll jump right in. Um, every month we have very routine items that we uh, are required to bring to you. Uh, the first one, um, we have several different fee waivers. Uh, I'll wait on the EMS in case um, there's any questions from, from Mr. Kaler, but uh, you have a water leak. Um, waiver you can do them all together I think is, is okay. fine uh, and the information is there on that one uh, you have an occup occupancy tax penalty uh, that we would ask that you waive uh, this is a, a special situation where someone has passed away and they had to be out of state and uh, that sort of thing and they're typically a very uh, good payer on that tax and the last one is a um, 
sort of a special situation um, uh, where staff is requesting the waiver of an EMS bill, um, which is something we don't do often, but uh, we are asking that you uh, waive that bill. And Mr. Keller is here if you had any questions about it. Uh, there's not a lot of detail we can get into about the patient, but as far as the situation. Anything else on that action? Jim, you've heard presentation by Mr. Wooten. Any questions? Uh, where's the management director here? Or the, uh, where's the services director? Any questions for him, reference that, and we are allowed to be able to approve those all at once. We don't have any questions, Todd. You see the three before you. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to waive the uh, water bill, the late penalty on oxy tax, and also the EMS bill. Okay. I would, I would second that. Have a motion to say. Any further discussion from any of the members? If not, all in favor of motion say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the, the next uh, grouping is the two requests actually from the city of Marion. Um, just happened that they had two totally different um, projects they're working on coming around the same time and they're asking for your consideration. The first one involves uh, some work they're looking to do up on Main Street. Uh, you may have noticed on the corner of East Court and Main Street there's a box a yellow box it says CON. That's a City of Marion electrical box, uh, and they, you know, they connect drop cords to it and that sort of thing for Mountain Glory and different events. What they're wanting to do is run an electrical service from that box uh, across a portion of the courthouse lawn and then come out to the Main Street sidewalk, uh, they, where they would then do some uh, electrical outlets and that sort of thing. Uh, and they have sent an easement for you to look at and approve if it's okay. The, uh, Mr. Coates, county attorney, has looked at it, didn't see any issue with it, um, and it's very straightforward. So if, you'll, if you're okay with that, we'd ask that you approve it. Okay, gentlemen, you heard the presentation request from the City of Marion. You've had time to read that, I'm sure. And I'll cover the second one after this. Motion to uh, grant the easement. Have a motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the, the second request from the city. Um, there is an African American cemetery uh, on Moorhead Road that is, uh, for many, many years, it was uh, hard to get to and it was overgrown, and a, a group of citizens uh, led an effort to clean up the cemetery, cut down trees and brush and improve the appearance so folks could come and pay their respects. Uh, one issue has been a lack of good access to the cemetery by the public. And so it just happened a couple of years ago that uh, unfortunately for the community maybe, but um, the person that owned the property, there was a mobile home that was seized by the U.S. government as part of a um, say a legal activity and so the US government has owned this uh, mobile home uh, the city had expressed interest in acquiring the property primarily for access to the cemetery and the uh, cleanup and that sort of thing so the city now has that property or they're in the process of obtaining it and they are interested in removing the mobile home and other improvements uh, I think you may know Mr. Crawford, but I think they're planning to do just a simple parking lot so folks can park there and then go to the cemetery. Uh, they are proposing that they, uh, that we partner with them, that they do the, hire out the demolition work, and they're asking that the county waive the tipping fees. I believe the, uh, the demo work was probably three to four thousand dollars and the tipping fee uh, is about $1,500. So they're definitely taking more of that um, cost on, but it's definitely, staff's opinion, a worthwhile project to partner in. So we would ask that you waive that fee. For our part, it would just be the tipping fee. We would not be uh, uh, granting any 
financial happy dollar other than that. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty straightforward. I tell you, gentlemen, if you if you notice, there's a lot of cemeteries that go unkept. Yeah. You know, this one's in the city, and I'm familiar with that area through there, and it's it's a worthwhile effort they're putting forth to do this. The city but, will maintain that cemetery, also. The city will maintain it along with the Oak Road. Okay, gentlemen, you heard the uh, presentation request. Or is open for a motion. Motion to uh, waive the the tipping fee for the. Uh, uh, mobile home that will be uh, dismantled and removed. Okay. Second. Okay. All, any further discussion? All in favor of said motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. The, well, as I say, the last item I had under admin um, is actually maybe more appropriate for Mr. Keller to talk about it. Um, I'll just give a short intro. If yeah, that'll be fine. Maybe he can give an overview of the the policy uh, the the board typically uh, and we'll get into detail on the policy in a second but typically uh, it's actually our policy that when you receive a policy that you do two readings uh, and we're asking for you to waive that tonight uh, for a policy that has been recommended for our EMS uh, staff uh, and it involves personal protection equipment so Mr. Keller can talk about what it means, uh, what that entails, and uh, why we think we need to adopt that pretty quickly and not wait the couple of months. Do you have a, just to Come on address up. it? Not a, Introduce yourself, Mr. Keller. <laughs> you don't need an introduction. Uh, the policy he is uh, referring to is personal protection equipment, uh, a policy that would change um, our essentially our OSHA uh, approved policy or that meet a policy that meets all the OSHA standards. So as we have talked uh, here over the past several years, the uh, culture of safety change that we embarked upon in 2010 has led us uh, to almost six years without a lost time incident at EMS. So we've uh, reduced all of our different types of injuries from back injuries to motor vehicle crashes to everything in between. But one of the areas that we have still managed to have uh, difficulty with is eye exposures to EMS employees. Uh, when we looked at the different policies, there's I think we're going to be here again leading the way and changing the culture of safety as it relates to eyes, eye protection. So we are... Um, having employees if gloves are on eyeglasses are on and that it's a pretty straightforward approach uh, we have if you look at the amount of workers comp claims uh, that we have had they i mean literally we've went from hundreds of thousands of dollars prior to 2010 and in back injuries to where in 2014 it was 550 dollars total cost in a year's period and this as we've said this safety program has garnered national attention because essentially it's unheard of for EMS systems to go this long without uh, significant injuries to employees. But we believe we can further reduce those costs and improve the wellness of our, uh, of our paramedics by uh, proceeding with this. And at the end of the day, it's good common sense uh, or eye protection. If you walk in a number of industrial sites, you've got mandatory eye protection policies. And we're dealing with stuff every single day that it's just as dangerous in your eyes as it is on your hands. So that's kind of the 30,000 foot view of, of the policy. So we would ask that you approve it tonight and we'll put it in the policy manual in that department. Mr. Mr. I don't have a problem with that. I'll make a motion we approve the EMS personal protective equipment policy. Okay. Have a motion? I would second that. Have a motion second. Any further discussion? Thank you, William, for that. I uh, appreciate that. I think it's number one is protection of employees. It's it's long time needed, but I remember Mr. Walker and I rode together and as many times we'd have those little glasses and he'd reach over and pull them off, put them on me just to make sure that I was protected. So sometimes we tend to forget that, but when it's in policy, it takes effect. Yeah. We have a motion to second and uh, any further discussion? I, I believe this is a really a good policy and it needs to be implemented and made up. Yeah. Okay, no further, no further comments, questions. Uh, all in favor of said motion? Aye. Uh -huh. uh, any opposed? Motion carries. And while you're here, we have a uh, 
five thirty, so we're just a couple minutes ahead. The nine one one center update. You have in front of you a proposed contract with uh, Frontier Communications for the installation. Uh, and it's a lease agreement as well for three geodiverse Vesta phone stations. These are the uh, 911 stations that sit at each terminal. As we've uh, discussed over the past several months, the 911 backup center that is a requirement by North Carolina General Statute to be implemented operationally by June 30th, 2017. Uh, we're on track with our uh, plan of getting the center operational. But our request tonight is for you to consider uh, the entering a three-year lease contract with uh, Frontier. They are the provider of uh, 911 phone equipment at the primary backup center. Our recommendation, uh, and Mr. Walker, our deputy director, is, is here as well. Our recommendation is to sync this specific contract for the backup center with the, our primary center. So when the two, when the primary center's contract comes up, we will be uh, renewing and updating the primary and the backup center at the same time. Uh, with this, the total lease payment is $219,920, scheduled to be paid in 10 quarterly lease payments. We do have the Frontier, Frontier Shield option, which ensures all technology upgrades that occur uh, during the lease period is automatically uh, applied to our equipment and this again will allow for state-of-the-art communications uh, in the 911 center when you look at uh, cost comparison uh, what we are under or what our lease is at the primary site this backup uh, project is is right on track and consistent with our cost at the primary center I would put in as I've noted in the memorandum is uh, requesting the signature on the contract if you approve it to be contingent upon the final approval from the North Carolina 911 board so this lease has been sent uh, it needs clearance from them marking this is 911 fund eligible uh, and that's what I would ask consideration for please any questions gentlemen we would they of course, I, man, I just looked over at Matt. Would they consider a five-year at any savings, or do you think the three years is the best route to go? Yeah, I, I think the three-year is uh, the best. The 911 board, the state board, is discouraging anything more than 36 okay. months at the present, simply because of the next generation 911 technology Change. coming to where all of these contracts. I mean, we've got. Uh, a lot of navigation to do to get us to next gen 911. So I, th I think that 36 month is correct in this situation. Jen, uh, Randy, any any questions? Any further questions or comments or anything? Matt. Okay, floor is open. I make a motion that we approve the contract with Frontier for the 911 backup operations contingency upon approval of the North Carolina 911 board for use of the 911 flood funds. I'd second. A motion second. Any further discussion? All in favor said motion say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. We were going to update on the uh, yes. the DOI inspection of the 911 center uh, very quickly. And before I do that, just to uh, update, we had submitted a 911 grant for the backup center, uh, and that was through the 911 board. That grant was $194,000. Uh, we were notified that it has been sent from grant to funding reconsideration where there was additional paperwork that was required of us since they sent it to funding reconsideration. Uh, we should hear on that by the end of September and maybe have an update at the October meeting. But if that funding is awarded, that's going to uh, really assist us in receiving additional funds to implement the backup center. Uh, to ensure our 911 fund remains healthy uh, for continued upgrades in the center. Which leads, leads us into uh, reporting to you on the uh, recent Department of Insurance inspection, um, and Craig is here as well and uh, can answer any questions that you may have uh, along with myself. Each fire department is inspected by DOI and that uh, 
translate to the citizens in the room for your fire uh, rating, uh, what you pay on home in or homeowners insurance, and the communication center is part of that rating. Uh, we were rated back in 2015, which would have uh, really looked at year 2014, and the center had a 7.5 7 rating out of 10. The average in North Carolina is, is 7 to 8 of uh, 911 centers. But on the recent inspection, and this was applied to uh, Marion, and, or I'm sorry, Glenwood and Nebo's in recent inspection, uh, the center was at 9.1 out of 10 which uh, was really remarkable, but I think it goes to the efforts that have been put in to upgrade uh, the technology and the uh, systems that are uh, working in the 911 center, the Dobson Tower, the Wildcat Tower, the addition of both of those towers in the county, uh, improved that score, the electronic protocols that uh, uh, the board approved where telecommunicators are going through a series of questions when someone reports a fire. They also do that for medical and law enforcement. But in this specific uh, uh, inspection, they're looking at fire. So someone reports they have a gas leak. It goes through a number of questions that are electronically. It gives them uh, instructions over the telephone of how to safely evacuate the area. So all of that combined goes into this overall score. And also the change of our staffing levels to ensure that our 911 calls are being answered in a timely manner uh, went into improving this. So 7.5 to a 9.1, uh, <coughs> really anything over 8 is, I mean, really doing well and, and we want to continue moving in that direction. So. Ultimately, our goal is 10. We've got it broken down and, and know the things that we've got to uh, continue working on to get it there, but uh, certainly made an impact in the overall ratings. Craig, do you have anything to add? Yeah, well, well, all this, uh, the, average, the average being seven to eight in the uh, state across the state of North Carolina, we're, we're very pleased with the number one. The fire department definitely can't blame you for not doing the rating. You gave them all the help that you give them. That was one of the discussions we've always had come election time is trying to lower, you know, it may not happen taxes, but if it happens in your fire insurance, what you're paying at home, that homeowners can save $100, $200. It's worth giving another 100 back to the fire department. So when, you know, you talk about your fire tax and people sometimes are against that, is uh, when they look at what their fire departments are saving them in the long run, it's not a lot to give back when it's just a five dollars or something but we appreciate what y'all's work and and jim and the other david and tony's not here but appreciate the work that that this board has done trying to to better that system and anything we can do i promise you this this board i feel like i'm not speaking for matt or randy but i think i, I i've got their feelings at heart but anything that we can do as a board to continue that effort i think you got our full support Ashley, anything you want to add? No, I was just thinking um, what we can do as staff is maybe have an update to you, at, if not in a meeting, but at least for the information, uh, is to give an update where the re-rating process is for the different departments. Um, I won't ask right now about them being prepared for it, but we can have the information for you to see all the progress all the departments have been making. So Craig will have that ready by October, maybe, right? So. Our office actually just got the last, uh, we were just notified last week of uh, of the rating for Marion, so it can definitely put all of that together. We'll have that ready for next okay. month, just so you're all aware. Any further? We, you have anything else? No, we just appreciate the uh, support. I think we've done uh, some really good improvements at the 911 Center and okay. got the county on the cutting edge of technology for the center, so. We feel really good about it, and that team over there has worked really, really hard. Uh, Freeing up some 911 funds has helped us tremendously here as a rural county versus some of the larger cities that had a lot of money, you know, they could actually put into. So it's, it's helped us tremendously as a board, too, to make decisions, what we've done. Okay. Anything else on there? Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Look forward to hearing your report back next month, sir. <laughs> Okay, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, about seven <coughs> minutes ahead. Uh, let's drop down to old business, item A, water project updates. 
Sure. Um, <clears throat> in your uh, agenda, I mentioned the two water projects, um, but I wanted to mention that uh, Mr. Harmon and I went to Raleigh uh, last week. Uh, sometimes you go to meetings in Raleigh and they're a waste of time and gas and, and effort, but it was certainly worth our time that day. Uh, the Environmental Management Commission, uh, as you may recall, is the entity that is responsible for approving a uh, reclassification process for a, wa a drinking water source, in this case, Lake James. And for several years, we've been working on that process um, to have Lake James reclassified as a water source. Uh, and it, a lot of the times, people don't hear about it here and it's in the background, but there's still things happening. So where we are now is uh, their staff has been working on research. They've been doing water testing, uh, a lot of communication with staff for many, many months now and they had a presentation to make to uh, the commission this past week. Uh, at this point, they had asked for permission to move forward with the process and to have a public hearing here in the, uh, in the community. And so the commission heard all the reasons why they should move forward and they approved it unanimously. So sometime in the next three or four months, they will schedule a public hearing here in uh, McDowell County to receive public comment on the reclassification. So that's a big step for us. Um, it's something that we've been working on for many, many years uh, and will probably take many, many more years to have it come to completion, but it's something that um, I know this board and prior boards have been passionate about. So we'll definitely keep uh, the, the board informed on uh, when the date will be. The public will be notified uh, it, it, w it won't be here, it won't be in the courthouse, it'll be at a neutral site, um, but the board is certainly welcome to be there, staff will be there representing us, and um, certainly the public will be invited. Uh, so that's exciting, um, and we'll uh, keep you up to date. Uh, the two other projects uh, that for so long, I, I know I sounded like a broken record, we hope to get started soon, we hope to get started soon. Uh, we have the uh, Nebo Interchange Water Project and the Universal uh, Water Line Project. Both projects, I can happily say, are under contract. Uh, the Nebo Project has started. I uh, believe they have started on the southern end and are working back towards, uh, towards the Caboose area on Harmony Grove Road, but uh, they are both underway, or well, soon to be on Universal. And uh, they're a long time coming. It took a lot of work on the um, part of engineers and staff to get some of the funding identified on the Nebo project, uh, but it was um, certainly a worthwhile effort. Um, so we will have a uh, groundbreaking for that. Even though it started, we can still do a groundbreaking uh, on the 22nd, um, and we'll get that. Uh, time and location out to you and notify the, the press and everything, but a, a definitely a worthwhile project, an exciting project to get water to that interchange and what it might mean for uh, job creation and business development there. The other project, the Universal Project, this is a much smaller project, will take a lot less time, and there's really only one customer, which is the county. Um, but we are still excited about it. The city is really excited about it because they get a free water line out of it and additional uh, water revenue. Um, mm -hmm. But um, it was a good, a good deal for us to be able to do that, and we're excited the city is uh, partnering as well. That project will start probably in the next two weeks. Uh, there's a, a railroad crossing, which is always <laughs> complicated and expensive and all those things, but... Um, We'll hopefully have that done by Christmas, if not sooner. So we'll have another city water customer. Um, That's a city. Christmas present. Yeah, it is. It was annexed July 1st, so um, their territory grew a little bit too. So um, it's about all I had on the water projects. Uh, any questions about things? Continue to move forward. That's, that's been our goal for. 
ever since I've been here. Sir, I, I did on that topic, I had a call today from someone um, who lives on Stacy Hill Road. And he said, I've noticed you're putting down pipe. Are you are you going to take a ride and come up my way? And I said, I'm, I'm sorry to say we're not. Uh, I know there's extreme interest on, in that area. We've met with folks in years prior. Uh, if if I had an unlimited amount of money, we would be running the water line on that road right now too. But uh, the estimate for that line is probably about a million dollars. So that's going to take time to figure out how to pay for that and other areas that have expressed interest. So probably what staff will do uh, to keep things moving is we'll get this project underway uh, but keep our eyes focused on the future because if we're going to have a water plant one day we need more customers and more lines in the ground so uh, we'll work uh, with uh, the engineering team uh, and bring back some recommendations on uh, our next steps in the next couple of months and stacy hill's always had since i've been on this board been issues there so that would kind of help tie our loops in well, the yeah, loops that, that really would make a good loop right there and the, like you said that uh, there is some issues with uh, with good water uh, in that area and I think that uh, down Fairview also I do too. all that ties the lines are all right that together mm -hmm. yes sir anything else okay um, we're still just a couple minutes I think we might be can we get the board appointments in before do you think we're about two minutes out okay mm -hmm. Go to item B under old business. Yes, few. Okay, this is the second reading for a vacancy on the focal point advisory committee. We have one application is from David Setzer. And this is the first reading for the library board of trustees. They have three openings and um, their board is by districts, and the three openings are Nebo, Old Fort, and At Large. And the Nursing Adult Care Committee, I am still advertising, and I have had no uh, applications. It's a very important board, too. Is there nobody on the library board? We do not have yet. That's just the first reading. We'll advertise it. And okay. Bring it back from the city. Another one? Okay. So we do have a second reading for the focal point advisory committee. David That's Session. true. David He's the only true. applicant. Okay. So we have two boards out here that need some openings, and we have not had any applications or requests. Can, can you repeat the names of the boards? The first board is the focal point advisory committee, and that's through the senior center. And the second is the library board of trustees, and. Um, they have three openings, Nebo, Old Fort, and At Large. And Marlin said they did have interest in that. They have two that are interested in that. Okay. The good. Nursing Adult Care Committee, uh, they tour the nursing mm -hmm. homes and make recommendations there. We do not have any applications for that, and they have a couple of vacancies. They are very important committees. I would advise anyone that is watching us on the tube, yeah, we can to, if you're interested, please uh, contact the appropriate folks and uh, do a little volunteer work and get on some of these committees. Yeah. Ha have your voice heard out here. Okay, gentlemen. Um, we have a second reading for the... Uh... I'll make a motion we approve... Uh... David Setzer to the yeah. Focal Point Advisory Committee. I would second that. A motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor of said motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we have a 545 uh, appointment, CDBG public hearing uh, closeout, and I will declare us into a public hearing setting. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, Commissioner Hollifield and I were talking about this item earlier, and it's hard to believe, but it's been five years since we had uh, Governor Purdue at the time that came to Marion and announced the expansion for Rock 10, which is now West Rock. So we've had a change of governors and a change in business name. Um, but we had partnered with the company at the time uh, to get them in the old Swift Gailey, Gailey and Lord building on the 70 East. Uh, 
we had several different grants that we worked with, and uh, and this one in particular is the CDBG building reuse. It was a grant for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and I believe primarily it was used for the HVAC system in that facility. So they put in uh, brand new equipment when they went in, and just almost made it a new building. It's, mm -hmm. It was a very nice project, and. Um, very nice to see in the, an older building. As the return on the um, the catch, I guess, on the the grant was that they had to hire folks, and typically with CDBG projects, there has to be a benefit for low to moderate uh, income individuals. In this case, they had to hire 75 low to moderate individuals, and a total of 124. And so there was a couple, um, as we're getting into this project, we're still coming out of the Great Recession. Uh, and so their business is dependent on, you know, people buying, you know, Chick-fil-A and different things that they make for. So there were um, a couple of years where we asked for extensions from the state and were granted so they could get their hiring, uh, hiring done. Uh, they have uh, completed their hiring and um, they have hired 96 low to moderate individuals and over 124 full-time folks, so that was exciting to hear they've uh, gone over the target. So as part of the closeout of the project, uh, we're required to have a public hearing and talk about the investment, which I've done, talk about the jobs, which I've done, and also receive any comments from the public on good, bad, indifferent about the grant, and um, we will submit those comments, uh, if any, to the state as far as the closeout package. Uh, the company uh, has communicated with me. They were uh, grateful for the uh, investment and the opportunity to work with us. So that's all I have. And okay. What we'll do, we'll start on the left-hand side. If anybody has any comment from the public about this CDBG, this Sorry. is a mouthful, close-out public grant. Yes. I think it's wonderful that they hired 100 Great. Good news. Anyone else on the left side? Now we we'll move over to the right side. Any public comment? Okay. All right. Very talkative crowd tonight. I like the Chick Fil A boxes. I do too. <laughs> yeah. When you sit down and think about what all goes on right here in McDowell County, you know, it's just it, those little Chick Fil A boxes. You may not think about it, but eat Chick Fil A and open those boxes up. And uh, that's made right here in Marion, North Carolina, for the most part. So, now one of the things that we need to uh, realize here, it says hire 124 people. Now this is above and beyond of what their normal staffing is. So 124 people can be a small industry out here in the world. Sure. So basically, what we've got here is basically a, the amount of people that's equivalent to a small company. That has been added to an existing company, and you know we're seeing this throughout the county. Um, and uh, so, uh, talk about that later. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. We'll need a motion to go out of public hearing. I'll make a motion. We go out of public hearing. Second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Okay. From this point, Mr. Wooten. We're done with that part, and we will submit the comment. Um, as part of the minutes to the state as we close it out. So appreciate it. Okay, so we're still a little bit ahead. Let's drop down to new business um, item A. That would be the goal setting. Um, Is that going to take, do we need to? It'll take uh, just a few minutes. Okay. We've got time. Um, okay. Every year, uh, or maybe every two years, but uh, the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners sends a request out to each of the 100 counties and asks that uh, each board, if they have any legislative goals, that they submit them in writing uh, to their organization. And then in January of 17, uh, there will be a convening in Raleigh where representatives from as many counties as possible uh, will then vote on those goals and essentially set a uh, lobbying plan for that legislative year. 
Commissioner Hollifield has represented the county before, uh, and so he knows what that process is like. Sometimes it's horse trading when you get down there. You have urban counties with different interests and rural counties, and you know, they try to, you know, compromise sometimes and you know, please 100 uh, different counties, which can be difficult, I, can, I would imagine. Uh, so they are asking for our goals, uh, if we have any. I took the opportunity to, to put two in the memo that I've heard from the board, um, and there may be others, but the two that I've heard fairly recently would be uh, the ability for school systems to have local control over their uh, schedule. They had that ability until about 10 years ago. The tourism lobby didn't necessarily like that because uh, you know, if school children were starting school in early August, they saw that as lost revenue because people weren't traveling to the beach or the mountains or camps. So they lobbied the legislature who set up the school calendar law that set when you know, schools could start. And they have some exceptions for school systems that are affected by snow. They can start typically a week earlier, um, but for the most part, they have to go by the state rule. So the school system here is going to ask through their association and their lobbying efforts that it um, be changed. And I know our association is gonna ask for it as well to allow that local decision-making uh, for every county, um, just because you know we know best what schedule works here. So that was one goal. The other one, uh, I've been to meetings and conferences where this comes up a lot from rural counties, uh, where the state changed the transportation funding formula two or three years ago. Uh, I think the intention was a good one in that they try to take politics out of transportation funding. Uh, you would have instances where very pa powerful legislators would do a four-lane road in a, an area where there were 5,000 people and it wasn't going where it was needed the most. There's been an opinion that, and primarily from rural counties who have been affected most by this, that that's maybe not, the formula came up with maybe wasn't the best and the most fair. You know, a lot of projects that were being designed had been permitted and they were just dropped off the map, the radar. Uh, for us, it was the widening of US 221 south of Marion. Uh, that was probably within a year or two of proceeding. And when the new formula came out, it didn't score as high as some of the projects in Mecklenburg and Wake who have the higher traffic. So it was dropped way down the list. So there have been a lot of interest from rural counties to tweak that formula, maybe have two separate pots of money for urban and rural. There's lots of different uh, suggestions out there, but... Um, uh, I'll, the, I'll make a comment on that. Ron yeah. can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's regional. This spot score we're doing now, Every project went to Buckham County. Uh, they got it. And we might get some divisional pro properties. This is still many years out, but the current formula, none of your rural counties around Buckham County saw a dollar. So that right there tells me that it's not fair. And I, I think logical people understand there are a lot of cars and a lot of people in Buncombe County. No one is disputing that. We have a lot of counties in the state that uh, have a lot of growth, and we should all be appreciative of that. My but, major concern is they're going to grow so big, they're going to eventually be here. Right. We've got to prepare for the future. If we don't take the steps to prepare, we're catching up and we never catch up. If they don't give us any money, we're not able to do that. So in summary, the suggestion from staff uh, is to have those two goals put forward. And I know it I've heard from the association staff, so yes, we've heard that quite a bit, those two items, so they'll definitely, I would think, get uh, move forward uh, for their uh, lobbying plan. But if you had any other suggestions, we've got a little bit of time before these are due, I think about a week and a half or two. Um, we'll 
by consensus, we'll go ahead and, and submit those. And if you think of something uh, in the next day or two, just please let me know. Jim, if, like you said, if there's anything at all that, that you think of, these are two priorities. Um, there was one that came up in, at, at a board meeting about six or eight months ago, and Commissioner uh, Brown was one that was uh, leading the discussion, and I remember the comment was made, we need to uh, get that to the legislative committee, but I can't remember what that was. Yeah. Might have to research our, uh, we'll our records through. on that. Go back several months, six or seven months probably. We'll check that out. And yeah. Include but this with the school calendar, you know, that, that shows up just about every year. And and the folks down on the coast, eastern part of the state, sort of keeps it the way they want it, I believe. <laughs> now, uh, I have served on a couple of these committees uh, down there, and they're very worthwhile. Agriculture and environmental, what I was more interested in, but they got about seven, eight committees. So I would encourage. Uh, members of this board to get involved in it is a good little trip to go down there though you know it's a 400 miles round trip so it takes a bigger part of the day for a two hour we're meeting we have another public any any other comment we have a, another public hearing um at six o'clock can we slide down to item e under new business under the tax matters may take just a little bit longer it's the glenwood christmas parade sure that one closure. won't take very long uh from i guess three or four years uh mr crawford may know it's from that community but glenwood uh, ruritan has been uh putting on a great event there in the community uh, with their christmas parade and uh, all different types of uh, fireworks and different things uh, but as far as the parade itself, uh, the procedure has been for uh, their club to send a form to the county for the county manager to sign and send it in to NCDOT. The state has changed the, their uh, rules a little bit. They're now requiring an actual closure by the county of that road. Uh, so the city does this quite often for Mountain Glory, for the homecoming parade, and donut festival and different things so it's very similar to what they do uh, we have a it's actually an ordinance uh, in your packet and it's a, a, a model ordinance uh, that uh, lays out the date and the times and the stretch of road and that sort of thing but assuming you uh, approve that we will send that to DOT and the road will be allowed to be closed so there will be a lot of angry people in Glenwood if you say no. And all they throw over the a lot of candy down there, too. You come, there's no rules once you close the road. They'll throw candy. <laughs> so, I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance declaring the road closure for the 2016 Glenwood Christmas Parade. I motion. second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor say motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Unanimous decision. You can carry that back to Glenwood, Matthew. Let them know. Okay, we have a six o'clock uh, uh, appointment, economic development, uh, public hearing. I will declare us into a public hearing setting. Mr. Wooten. Yes, sir. Um, on this one, too. We will, um, I'll give an overview of uh, this company and as much as I can and the incentive and then. Uh, Please ask for a comment from the public. Uh, we have the Universal Building uh, has some empty space now that we've been marketing to different folks. And a couple of months ago, we had uh, a client look at the space, and this is the space behind uh, the Skill Center. Uh, and we had a company express some interest in that space and moving here and uh, creating jobs, which is what we want to hear. So uh, the company, um, get the number here, uh, the company would create 36 jobs, uh, and we do typically $3,000 per job uh, for an incentive. And since we own the building, it's a little bit different this time. Instead of a cash payout, uh, we're proposing that we do uh, one year's free rent, and the balance would be uh, sort of a a match on a building reuse grant so it's not a direct payment to the company uh, it's 
a free uh, space for a year and then investing in, in our building, which is good. Um, so th the incentive um, is a little bit different than just a, a regular payment, but uh, it's a little bit innovative. But this is a metal working company, I can say that, and um, uh, the state is working with them on uh, a 1NC grant application. So we're not allowed to uh, announce since it is a state project, but it is metal working and it is uh, 36 jobs. Okay, we'll start over on the left and receive any public comment. Um, we just looked at 124 jobs five, 10 minutes ago. Now we're looking at 36. Any public comment on the left side? We'll start with Ms. Jones. Sounds like a good deal to me. <laughs> Anyone else going back through? On the left side. Let's move over to the right side. Any public? Well, it looked like he was fixing to say something back there. Yeah, I think it's great, especially the location. Location, 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 always good. Where they're doing metal working with the college, where we go to classes at. And then some people made us even walk back into the job way out the back door. Yeah. That's right. But from their, from their metal working classes, I think. Anyone else like to make comment on the right side? Okay, gentlemen. We must have got a public hearing. Then we'll, or do you want to do both? The next one's not till six fifty. Yeah, we've got a little so bit of time. We've got a little time. I might go, or should we go out of public here? So uh, I'd say. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. We would ask that you improve the incentive. Okay. Make, Gentlemen, make a motion to improve the incentive for this company in amount of one hundred eight thousand. I second that. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And just a follow-up comment, Mr. Perro did a good job of uh, touting the facility there. Uh, a, a lot of the companies that we have shown the space, uh, you know, we're very impressed with the skills center, and I know it's a big selling point for Mr. Abernathy to bring in folks and walk through and see, you know, actual people. Uh, taking classes and the trades that they need workers for. So it's, it's well thought out and um, it's a good economic development tool as well as a, a training center. Because all the way back to several years ago, we purchased that building. Mm -hmm. um, I say it over and over and over. It's probably one of the greatest things this board did is, is the step forward by a leap of faith and purchase that building and it's, uh, it's, coming, it's, it's coming to fruition. And uh, just the rent we collect off of it will help pay the, that bill. The building off. is full or will be. Uh, you've got a skilled training center out there. So That's it's exactly right. it's serving the need and serving the, the purpose for why it was purchased. That's exactly right. And That's what it's about. One of the few. Uh, it's paying for unique. itself through rent. It's paying for itself. Paying for itself. Yes. Okay, let's move uh, about eight minutes ahead. Uh, tax matters, you think? I, I can do that. You can? Yes, sir. Item B under new business, gentlemen? Uh, for tax matters, typically we uh, just have the releases and refunds, et cetera. Um, we do have uh, a couple of different things. You may remember last year we had several elderly exemptions and nonprofit exemptions, et cetera, that came in later than the deadline. And at that point, you had said that was okay. You know, we had a cutoff of probably November, I think. Uh, but you've got a couple of those again where, um, you know, folks that you know didn't get the mail, or you know they were maybe in a, a home or out of state, uh, that sort of thing. So you've got uh, it looks about like seven or eight uh, that are asking for a late elderly exemption. Uh, you've got a couple of. Uh, You've got a religious exemption. Uh, you've got a charitable exemption. Uh, you've got, uh, and then two exemptions for uh, common property for homeowners associations, which are um, they're tax exempt as well. So staff would recommend. Uh, and there's one other item in there that we are going to staff is going to table if we have that ability. As far as an appeal, we're going to withdraw that. Uh, but we would ask that you approve the uh, these late applications as well as the typical releases and refunds. 
And that one that you want to table would be that first letter. Right. Okay. Okay, gentlemen. Had time to look over those or any further questions or comments for Mr. Wooten? I, one more thing, if you excuse me. Uh, we do have um, a, a write off uh, request from the tax collector. Uh, we're only allowed to collect taxes for a 10 year period. And after that, we're no longer allowed to collect those. And so without an action of the board, they actually stay on our system. It's sort of strange. We can't just delete it off based on statute. You have to approve it. So we would ask that any taxes over the 10 year um, period be uh, written off. And uh, that is the request is in your packet from the tax collector. And you do see the letter from our tax collector, Linda, yeah. on your fray. Motion to approve uh, appeals and exemptions. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Comments? All favor of motion, say aye. 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 You opposed. Motion carries unanimous. And let's see, we're still about two minutes. See much we can, the sidearm. Um, we can handle those two. In North Carolina, probably other states, but North Carolina, uh, the board has the authority for retiring law enforcement officers uh, to allow them to take their badge home with them, uh, which people may not realize, but that badge is county property. Um, yeah. But retiring employees can request that badge when they retire. Uh, so we've got two employees that have recently retired. You may have seen the reports in the newspaper, and you, you all know them very well. Um, Ricky Crisp and Brenda Vaughn uh, served honorably in the sheriff's office, and uh, the sheriff has requested that uh, uh, Mr. Crisp and Ms. Vaughn be able to uh, receive their badge as a donation. And also, uh, Mr. Crisp has asked to purchase his sidearm um, which the details of the sidearm are in the resolution, but uh, typically we do a sale for a dollar for retiring law enforcement officers. So staff would recommend uh, there's two separate resolutions um, for Mr. Crisp and for Ms. Vaughn. I request that you approve <coughs> those so they can uh, be recognized for their years of service. I'll make a motion we approve the resolution authorizing the donation of county on property for Brenda. And also, let me get to it. Mm, approve the resolution authorizing the sale of county owned property, being the sidearm to Mr. Chris, and also donating his item, his badge. I'd second that. The most say. Any further discussion or questions? I'd like to say, you know, we congratulate both of those for their years of service. Uh, sometimes in law enforcement, you, you know, years ago, I remember. Earl Webb been there when I was in elementary school and serving seemed like 50 years in law enforcement. If Andy was here, he could tell us exactly, I'm sure. But, um, you know, now with the uh, everything that goes on with law enforcement, we see it every day uh, just in a neighboring county, an officer uh, basically fatally wounded, a gunshot. I tried to follow that just a little bit. I was a little bit behind on that, didn't know that had happened. And I picked up on it, uh, I think, yesterday. And it's, it's sad that uh, you see stuff like this go on. Most of the time it's just like Highway Patrol said today, just obey the law so that prevents you from getting tickets. Just don't do wrong. Uh, but sometimes that's not the case, uh, and we see that a lot now. So we appreciate their service. Um, any further discussion? Any other comments? All in favor of motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four minutes before our next public hearing. I think we'll have enough time to do the ordinance discussion. No. <laughs> take, a little, <clears throat> take five I, minutes for that instead of three. I could try. Um, sometimes you, you get to a point where you, you've got too much or not enough. And, and we're moving right along, too. <laughs> I, I could mention... Um, fill time, but also to inform you that uh, we have been invited to uh, go back to the Carson House for the October meeting. 
So we'll make sure to um, you know, acknowledge their invitation, and that will be um, let's see that would be October tenth, and uh, we will post the change in meeting time and location. Probably meet at four if that's okay. I'd like to get probably in and do. have a pretty short meeting and uh, respect them so they're not there until ten o'clock at night, like it happens sometimes. It's always a pleasure to go there. Uh, had someone visit my office a couple of weeks ago that was from out of the out of the community and he said you know what's that picture behind your desk I said that's the Carson house I have a, a print from the 1930s of the Carson house on my wall and you know I was proud to explain that that was the first seat of government for McDowell County and I said we go back every year and sort of relive those early days and uh, have uh, the people's business take place there and it's definitely an honor and we're uh, fortunate uh, that they ask us back every year so um, we'll let them know that we'll plan on it and uh, hopefully have a, a great meeting hopefully the weather will cooperate uh, sometimes it's been very warm they do have air conditioning but it is uh, obviously an older house so um, we'll take cooler weather if we can have it we were out there one meetings before you two came on the board and we could hear something uh, moving and we thought it may have been Mr. Carson walking across the floors and it was squirrels running through the walls. So <laughs> needless to say, we were sitting there, I had my hair was standing up on my neck and I, I was young, I was my first meeting and uh, I was a little scared. Uh, but Mr. Haney assured me that it was not uh, Colonel John Carson walking uh, in to meet with us that night. So uh, a little bit of a uh, scaredness there for a first year uh, Commissioner, we still got a couple of minutes. Reports. I have six fifteen on my. You have six fifteen. All right, mine's a little slow. So let's just go ahead. Six fifteen. All right, we're right trying ahead. to milk this thing for everything it's worth. We have a six fifteen economic development public hearing. Another one, so it's exciting. I declare us into public hearing setting um, for an economic development discussion. Yes, sir. Um, this one's a little bit different in that it is an, a company that is uh, in the county. Again, it's confidential because they are working with the state on a 1NC grant. We can tell you they are proposing to hire 14 people. It is a woodworking job uh, industry, which is, uh, fits into our, um, our need and our background and our training. Uh, again, we have the same uh, proposed incentive of $3,000 per job. Uh, and this would be more of a, a typical uh, incentive where they would do the hiring show the proof and then request payment uh, for the payment per job um, this is a you know, different they're all uh, it's it's every company you talk to they have a, um, a uniqueness about them and this is certainly one of those um, hopefully we will be able to share more details uh, when the state moves along on their process so folks can start applying and uh, be hired for this one and the first one. Uh, but we're at the mercy of the state whenever they get around to it. Um, the, the goal for this company is for them to start hiring by the end of the year. Another good company. That's all I had on that one. Um, again, we'll take comments. Okay, we'll start on you want to start on the right hand side this time? Let's start on the left hand side. We always start out with the left for some reason, huh? Because the right hand don't know what we're doing, right? Left hand, any, any, this is our third public hearing. Not, not enough information. Not enough information. <laughs> so, any, any comment? It's 14 more jobs. That's, okay. Any to the right. Okay. Remember, that's tonight we've talked about 50 jobs, and we just heard a presentation just a few weeks ago. We've got over 200 jobs that's unfilled. Uh, so there's, there's another 50. We're going to have to come up with someone that wants to work. Tell well, people there's jobs out there. No They've got to want to work. I just got a, a, a text message today. They offered a guy a full-time job, and he wouldn't take it. And uh, I don't know how you... Feel sorry for somebody, but they wanted to go to school, but they were willing to work with them, but they would not take a full-time job. It's hard to bite off when you teach them in school and you're trying to push careers. They, they've got 
they have to make the move. Um, and we can we can bring a thousand jobs in, but can we fill them? And then when people from outside of McDowell County start filling those jobs, we're the first ones that start getting the complaints because there's n there's no work. There's a there's plenty of work here. Good pay in manufacturing jobs is exactly what we were told. So I would add a little bit to that. You know, um, I I hear this quite often about jobs and things. What we've talked about that we already be redundant. We talked about that one twenty four we closed out. Then the 36 that we're in, in, going to give incentive to, then the 14. And what was it, about three months ago, well, how many was it that bowed over we gave incentive for? How much was there? How many was four? Was it 40 or 50? Somewhere in that right? 40 now. some, wasn't it? 40, 46 jobs or something yeah. like that. And then the new industry on, on uh, Bowen Avenue and the old textile building that did not ask for incentive, right. I think. They're, uh, the goal is to have 25 in it, something like that. They're approaching that, I believe. Okay. So we're, there's a lot of jobs. It's actually coming into the county and uh, that uh, word might not be getting out on. I don't know. You can have career fairs coming up, college fair coming up next time pretty soon. So. I'll make a statement. A couple of these jobs that are manufacturing, they are in clean air-conditioned facilities. <laughs> Okay, you're going to go talk to people that threw plywood and non-air-conditioned facilities about work? These are people that will not run a machine in an air-conditioned facility. The jobs are there, and you pe some people can make very good money. All they got to do is show up and work. Motion to go out of public hearing. Good motion has it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hey, yeah. gentlemen, we'll need a motion to uh, approve the incentive. I'll make a motion to approve this uh, second incentive for create 14 jobs for $42,000 over a three-year period. I would second. And motion second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> motion carries. Okay. Brings us down to, um, other than the citizen comment, let me say this just real quick. Uh, citizen comment, um, we have a sign-up board if anyone wants to sign up to speak and what your subject matter would be. So if anyone wants to sign up, you're welcome to come forward and um, and sign up. We can pass this around if we'd like to. And just, yes, yeah, Ms. Ms. Jones, if you don't mind, just pass that back through. And what we'll do while we're looking is uh, reports and communication. What? Or do you, you have a? Well, we've got a little bit of discussion on the ordinance. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I marked right it, it through. It's that. a yes. perfect segue, okay. so it's really I'm good sorry. timing. I marked that when I checked it. Um, uh, Chairman Walker obviously couldn't be here tonight, but he um, did express a desire for the board to uh, discuss and um, recommend to the planning board that there be some uh, evaluation of, of our existing uh, lake protection ordinance uh, to see if there needs to be any revision uh, to that ordinance. Uh, and I believe. I don't think I'm going out on a limb, but I think he had a recommendation uh, that there be some changes. Uh, and he, I do not have the list in front of me of things that he, he was interested in looking at. Um, but some of the things that have come up uh, deal with average lot size, um, setbacks, uh, and that sort of thing. But I will get his, his list from him. But uh, there was a desire from him and Commissioner Brown for the planning board uh, to examine our ordinances and specifically the uh, Lake James Protection Ordinance and to see if any recommendation needs to come back from the Planning Board on uh, any changes. So I know there may be some interest uh, and desire here. Um, I know the two that aren't here had that desire for the Planning Board to do that. Uh, so I, <laughs> right. it's kind of in your lap uh, to do that. Um. I know I, I spoke with uh, Chairman Walker this evening, and he he shared with me some of the concerns. I, I don't I did not write those down. Some of it may just be nothing more than some verbiage or words changing, and, and just take a look at that because there there has been some concern, uh, and that was what he voiced to me, and uh, just to take a little bit more time to work with that for both parties involved, the, the, the county, the, the residents, and, and the developer. So um, 
that was his concern, gentlemen. Was maybe, maybe just a few little things here, and, and probably um, put that back to the uh, the board. Any things that we have, we probably need to write down. Uh, Ron's here. Uh, if you've been thinking about her, if we need to take another week. Um, I think his direction was what he would like to see, and maybe Commissioner Brown too, is that we put take that back to the planning board for him to look at, review. Um, and any suggestions that we may have or if we need to sit down and talk uh, with the planning board as a group. He would even mentioned that, that do we need to do we need to sit down with the planning board and have a discussion too. So so it's open to y'all. That's kind of what he had to pass on. I'll we'll start with our senior. Or do you want to start uh, with the I, I think uh, based on the emails and the comments that I've received and, and all that, it's it's totally appropriate to really go back and uh, examine what we have right now and, and ensure that you know it's totally currently appropriate or if there needs to be any revisions you know i don't have anything to propose but it's uh, good to really examine everything closely i don't particularly have a problem with the planning board looking at it. I don't want to make any decisions until those two commissioners are here to make the decisions. Yeah. Uh, that's got to be a five-member board decision and, and not one of us. So all of us is here. If the planning board wants to look at it, if the planning board comes back and says they don't want to change anything, I've got faith in our planning board. But if they want to look at it, I have no problem with that. That's just where I'm, I'm at. I'm, I'm at. Yeah, I think all of us need to be, you know, I mean, I can't speak for David. I can't speak for Tony. Uh, I can only speak for me. And uh, but I, I felt like that that's what they were wanting to do was go that route. You know, there may be some concerns brought to our attention that we haven't looked at, or just um, I haven't fully studied the entire ordinance. I'll just be honest with you, I haven't. Uh, I personally have not looked completely through everything. And maybe something there just to, to clean it up a little and you know, whatever needs to whatever needs to occur. And again, I don't know. You know, I don't know if Ron wants to make any. If you, you're just here listening, follow our direction. So if you had any comment or anything coming from his department. So gentlemen, what we'll need to do is uh, I guess Mr. Wood can get direction from, from y'all is to, <clears throat> to place that back to the planning board, but we need more specifics and just sending it back to them to review. So what staff will do, we'll get comments i'm sure from the public tonight right we'll make sure those are okay. carried forward but as far as the board we will get uh any of the, of the three of you that have any comments or questions even about the existing uh, ordinances uh, but if there are comments of specific areas uh, like chairman walker mentioned we will certainly pass that on to the board and say these are areas of interest that have come up a lot you know please think about it and make a recommendation one way or the other but we will um we've got a couple of weeks before they meet uh, and we can probably ask uh, to have a recommendation back at the october meeting We need a motion for that. You could do it. I, I do think it. you could do it, by, do it by consensus. Okay. Okay. Let's do it by consensus. Yeah. All in favor of that? Yeah. yeah. Matt. I'm in favor of that. Okay. So that's a majority of us here tonight, we'll, uh, and we'll make sure that those two are involved in that. That we get all the information. Like again, we we're fixing to come up on citizen comment, and it appears that the five we've got listed—that's the main topic. Uh, I don't see anything any different. So. And it may give us some insight tonight, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, citizen comment, you want to do reports and communications? Anything? How do you want to handle it? All I would, um, we'll get the date out on the, uh, or the time out on the groundbreaking uh, November 20, uh, September 22nd. Okay. Um, hope all of you can be there for that, for the Nebo Waterline. Um, It'll be at 3 o'clock. Yes, sir. Possible. I think that's all I had. Any other commissioner have any reports? Okay. Okay. All right. I guess we're up to 620 for citizen comment. 
All right. Uh, we just we'll be returning back uh, after citizen comment. It appears that we have met everything on our agenda tonight. Yes, sir. Uh, we do have another meeting upstairs with our cooperative extension for the report to the county. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I have a second. I had a question. Okay. <laughs> we call your motion. I would call my motion. motion to second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it'd be, uh, is it appropriate to, to make a comment or ask for information based on some of the comments we heard or not? It'll be our discussion. I won't be asking. You. We can discuss, discuss in here. We, we can, can discuss. You guys can do what you want. Okay. I was just going to ask for into. Uh, I guess we all would want. I would like to uh, have some of these ordinances, like uh, uh, Merck counties, McDowell's, and this various uh, uh, guidelines and things that Crescent goes by, and and some of these maybe. Uh, for information for us. Yes, all this Over information here. for us. To, so I'm set down because I'm hearing all this, but I don't really have it. Everything before me, where I can see where a difference is at, and I, I would like to have a plot of uh, of the peninsula, such as what we've seen here. And uh, I wouldn't mind. We have. A, we can get a copy. Uh, we can get a copy too. And I, I wouldn't mind even going in. I was going to suggest tour. we can. We've walked it before. We yeah. can go back and walk again. You know, I I I think there's something we need to be very thorough in. And, uh, and as far as the other ordinances from other counties, we will get those. And if the public had any others that we might miss, we'll certainly take those too. Okay. And we can certainly. We have things that we've got that we could email. We have an email address. I don't know. And we don't know who to look at and who not to, but um, we could do that. And I've got some things that we could read here that um, they're not, the ordinances, but um, I know George put together, my George put together quite a few suggestions based on those ordinances um, that it would probably give you an idea of what we're talking about, the kinds of changes that are needed at a minimum. Yeah, it may be good to have some, yeah. maybe Ron's got some information too. Yeah. Because uh, that was my thought, maybe Burke County, as well as we work with them. We, yeah. we work well Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 aye.